how do we know that the climate is changing? Scientists gather all sorts of records from the past, from ice cores, tree rings, fossil records, and more to understand how our planet is changing. But they can also see changes happening around them now. I study soils. I study clouds. I study ice sheets. I study the Earth's temperature. What? I mean, I get the last one, but what do soil and clouds have to do with climate change? If you want to predict if it's going to rain tomorrow, or in 10 years, or in 50 years, or in 100 years, then you need to understand something about clouds and how they work and how they produce rain, and then how much rain is going to be formed. Of course, rainfall is important for all sorts of things like growing crops and making drinking water and other things that are important to society. Specifically, I'm looking at how soils respond to climate change. So there's carbon in soils. As the soils warm, they're releasing more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is what's contributing to climate change. Climate change is causing warming, which is causing the soils to lose carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which then causes more warming. Okay, now that we've dug a little deeper, I see how this is relevant to climate change. But how do you study something like dirt? Well, speaking of digging, what I do is I'll go and I'll collect soils. Sometimes you just dig a pit, just dig a big one meter deep hole, and then I collect the soils into little bags, bring it back to the lab, and we actually combust them, and the carbon all burns off. And so that's how we can measure the carbon in them. We make holes through the ice sheet. They're small holes, just like a couple feet across, but very deep. Then once we have that hole open, we can lower instruments through the ice and measure what the ice is doing and what the ocean is doing where they meet. So that helps us to determine how fast the ice is melting when it comes into contact with warm ocean water. So we have instruments that we attach to the wings of special scientific airplanes. And then we fly the airplanes around, around clouds, through clouds to collect data. And we measure basic things like the temperature, the pressure, the winds, how much water there is. And then we specifically measure the individual cloud droplets one by one. Rain forms when small cloud drops, these are little droplets of water, collide with each other. And if you have a lot, enough of these collisions, then you can generate a really large drop that can fall out of the cloud. So I study the Earth's surface temperature, and that involves studying the temperatures we take over land through weather stations, and thermometers, as well as the temperatures we take on the oceans from ships and buoys and other measurement devices we have on the water. One tool that we use a lot of is remote sensing data, and by that I mean data from satellites. But the Earth is a really big place. How can we possibly know what's happening everywhere all the time? That is such a great question. Scientists and citizen scientists try to make as many observations as they can, but they can't do it all. That's why they report uncertainties in their data. When you're in an airplane, you're only at one place at any one time. And sometimes you want to know what is going on sort of everywhere at one time, and you can't do that. You're flying around and you're hoping to tell a story, but if you're over here, then you don't know what's going on over there at exactly the same time. Soils are really heterogeneous. So that means that they're really different from place to place. Even from where you're standing now to the next step over, they could be really different because there's different plants growing there. There might be a gopher or a squirrel that's dug there and made some changes. And so there's a lot of variability in soils. And there's also one more thing. No instrument is perfect. Ocean temperatures in an area where there's been a fair amount of uncertainty in recent years, largely because we've switched from collecting most of our ocean temperature measurements from ship engine rooms to buoys that sit directly in the water. And the problem is, if you're pulling the water into the engine room and then measuring it, you're going to get a bit of a warmer temperature than if you measured the ocean water directly like the buoys do. And it turns out that we have been underestimating warming of the oceans in the last 15 years or so because most of the groups weren't properly correcting for this switch from ship measurements to buoy measurements. Understanding that there are unknowns in the data makes scientists like Zeke work even harder and improve their tools and techniques. And remember, just because there are uncertainties in the data, it doesn't mean that scientists are uncertain that the climate is changing. 